which database should you use in your project? Now, this is the question which has been asked since ages, not just in your interviews, but in your day-to-day -day engineering work as well. And now the problem is that there are so many of them, SQL database, non-SQL database, key value based database, columnar database, and then there are people who store data in the file systems as well. So how do you choose the best out of them? All of these databases serve a specific purpose and it is extremely important to make the right choice. So you must understand the capabilities of all of these databases and then map with your requirement and then choose the right one. Today, I'm going to discuss one of the most important design discussions that is when should you use MongoDB? Now the answer to this question is not as simple as it seems to be. There has been a rapid development done by Mongo team in the last couple of years. So for example, since the year 2018, they have developed multi-document transactions. And then there are small caveats to it, which you must understand and look beyond the sales pitch. So let's start and cover the details of MongoDB and check when you should and when you should not use it. Now, I'm not going to cover things which are there in all databases. For example, CRUD, create, read, update, delete. This is there in all databases. Views, this is there in all databases. Then there is query plan, unique index and access control. So I'm not going to cover these because they won't really decide the design choices. I'm in fact going to cover five things which will actually make the choice. The first is ease of use. The second is schema validation. The third is transactions. The fourth is concurrency. And the fifth is encryption support. So these five things I found very interesting and these things should be considered while making a design choice. So let's look into them one by one. The first is the ease of use. Now here you can see easily that in the cloud.mongodb.com one can choose the database and then kick start with the basic configuration. It's unpaid cluster and you can also choose the higher end clusters and make your DB run. So very easy to kick start your MongoDB development. There are multiple options to connect to MongoDB. You can click on connect and connect using MongoDB shell. This is the typical option which we'll use when we connect in the production systems where you do not have leverage to have drivers. Then you have language specifics, for example, Node.js or Java. So let me see Java. And then you can choose the Java versions and uh, connect using your uh, code. You can generate the whole code and connect. You can use MongoDB Compass as well. So this is a software given by MongoDB where you can connect to the MongoDB and then there is a Visual Studio code. So there are multiple options using which you can connect. However, what I liked was this studio3d.com. So this earlier was called as RoboMongo and I really like the UI of this one, but it's just a matter of personal choice the software which you use at the end of the day, you just have to connect to the database. I can add the schema while creating a collection as well as I can add the schema later as well. So here I can add the validator for the collection and you can see that the validator is added by the data types. So if you insert anything then you can see that the validation is running so let's first see how many elements are there in my collection so if i run this query you will see that uh, right now nothing is there in my collection now i'll run my query that is the first query where uh, you, you notice the gpa equal to 3.0 so it gets inserted correctly and then this works fine so now you see one item getting added now if I add one more item and now you will see the error occurring. So here you see that the error has occurred and the error is on the data type validation that it shows that the 3.0 uh, the, was the considered value and the, the required was actually the double. So the double was required and we were ingesting 
int that's why it didn't get ingested so yes the data type validation can be done here you can also apply more complex logic for example here you see less than greater than such kind of logic so here you see discounted price should be less than the price and i was able to ingest the data and uh, let's first see what the data is ingested here so db.sales.find will give me the records which are there in this collection so if i run this query you will be able to see that the data got ingested into the database now if i change the validation or change the query so now this discounted price is more than the price and now you see the error so such kind of validations can also be added on the data and comparison can also be done one very very important thing to note in the document validation is that there are two types of validation one is the strict and the other is the moderate kind of validation you can see there is a whole talk around it the important thing to note is that the validations run only when the update or the insert operation happens in the database and there can be the behavior which you can choose to run that is strict or moderate now please note down this very important point around the validations so till now you have seen that the validations are working by data types the validations are working by having some comparison between the two keys in the uh, document but the grass is not always green so here the validations are running only when there is update or insert they do not run on the older documents so for example you have a collection with you and you have records from the beginning and later you decide to have some validations so the validations are not going to run on the older documents whereas in case of ms sql or any other relational database they do run so the nature of ms, MS sql is such that it will make sure that if the column name is int then all the values in that column will be integer it it will validate right whenever you run the the query to update the column type whereas here it's not the case so very small caveat but very important to remember as well so the nature of mongodb is such that it it is performant because you run a validation query you add a validator and the validator does not run then and there itself but it runs on the updates or the insert so or the previous documents are there yes there are few queries given to you by mongodb which can give you all the records which do not qualify the validator but this important caveat should be remembered that the you cannot rely 100% on the database to uh, to trust that if a validator has been added to a key which will be integer then it will be integer so that small caveat needs to be remembered and i i will showcase you with the help of an example how this validation works and uh, with the help of example where i'll insert a document then i'll add a validator and then i'll insert another document so the the first document which would be, would be there this that will pass the validator so let me showcase you right away now here you see that a collection i created named contacts and then i inserted one record and after adding the record now i'll add the validator so you can see that name is the required field as well as i'll add contacts so there are two fields which are required however the earlier document did not have the contacts field so you can see that the operation succeeded so that's a big thing that operation now succeeded now if i insert a new record and that new record is not having contact as you see here so this record will fail but now you see that this record got failed but the previous record was still success all the transactions at the document level are atomic this means that if in a document there are two fields and you make an update call to update those two fields then oh, both the fields will be guaranteed to be updated it's not going to happen that one field is updated and the other is not 
but the transactions across the documents are not atomic so for example if you make a query for example update many and that update many qualifies two documents so it can happen that one of the documents is updated and the other is not now since mongo 4.0 and 4.2 they have added the facility of transactions in 4.0 they have added the facility of transactions across replicas and in mongo version 4.2 they have added the transactions across the clusters as well having said that even in their documentation they have clearly mentioned to avoid such transactions across the documents because such operations will take a big performance hit they have recommended us to have a data modeling in such a way that we should be able to have a document where we can have atomic transactions we should model in a way that we don't even need the cross document transactions concurrency control allows multiple applications to run simultaneously and making sure that there is no inconsistency occurring in the system in mongodb this concurrency control is at the document level so if there are multiple code running and they try to access the same document and update the same document the mongodb will make sure that no inconsistency occurs however here also the caveat is same if there are multiple update operation happening across the document then the inconsistency can occur across the documents encryption encryption is one of the most important features in database with respect to security you would want to store information in a way that only client could decrypt it now this feature has been there in sql server or other relational database for very long time but in mongodb it is still in private preview although the architecture of uh, the encryption system looks very promising and they have explained how good it is but the problem which i see is that while other systems have this encryption logic for very long time the this particular feature is still in private preview and of course there would be users who would be hesitant to use the version 1 of this particular feature so very important feature i think mongodb is making progress here but still a long way to go to catch up with the other databases which have the feature of encryption for very long time now the most important part that is when should i use mongodb so the conclusion is very simple if you have a simple crud operation to be done create read update delete on a json then you use mongodb but if you want to have a relationships between various tables and you are thinking in terms of table then you use relational database the second is if you want to have highly performant system and you can compromise with a little bit of consistency and little bit of uh, transactions here and there then you can use mongodb but if you want to have highly consistent systems and you cannot compromise with respect to the consistency then you use the sql database so two sides of the coin you can use any of the two you just have to map your use case with the possible solutions and then you will be good to go that's it from my side for this mongodb analysis i'll keep on posting such videos every week do let me know how you like this video do like to the channel if you like it that's it from my side thank you very much